One person you've really got to blame. That's yourself. But despite the protests from friends and the public, there were those who argued that Martin should have served longer. For the police, the final verdict is still difficult to accept. I'm totally satisfied in, in my own view that the, the actual actions that he committed on the night uh, were those of murder. Uh, by the same token, I think there are other elements in terms of uh, Mr. Martin's uh, personality and demeanour um, to make representations around diminished responsibility. For others, the fact that Martin never showed remorse for his crime was enough to keep him behind bars for longer. There are some people who said, well, how do you feel about killing a uh, guy? When you're being broken in your house, it's an invasion. You are being invaded. And he can say, I was a danger to burglars. But actually, I'm not a danger to burglars walking down the road. It's when they come in through the window. On the 28th of July 2003, Tony Martin went free, returning to live at the farm where the shooting happened. But he soon learned of another court case, one that threatened the future of his beloved Bleak House. And there was the possibility at one time that he could lose the farm in order to pay the compensation. After serving three years for the manslaughter of a 16-year-old burglar, Tony Martin was released from prison. In retrospect, do you regret ever having that gun illegally? No. Fresh from his cell, he wanted to give his side of the story. I wasn't in the perpetration of crime, everybody knows that. But it was said that if I catch anybody in my house, I shoot him. Actually, it's a metaphor, it's a figure of speech, and everybody uses it. I've even heard women say about their children, you little monkey, I'll kill you. I didn't think it was a bad idea to the state that I was having, and no doubt other people were having, to say something like that, but it got me into a lot of trouble. Rather than returning to obscurity, Tony Martin stayed in the news. He found himself being adopted as a figurehead for those demanding a change to the self-defence laws. I think the Tony Martin case lit a touch paper that has led to an explosion of anger and resentment of millions of law-abiding British people who no longer feel that the state is on their side. And it touched a nerve and people, a lot of people who would basically who are busy going to work down their track every day, suddenly start to take notice what's going on in this country. There was a groundswell of opinion, probably before Tony Martin, to try and broaden the defence of self-defence. And therefore that has sort of subsumed his mental health problems and he's been made into a, a bit of an artificial icon and he's probably not the right person to have chosen to champion this particular uh, crusade. Well, I think... He's an icon uh, for the great British public because he did what uh, an awful lot of them would like to do or think they would do if uh, they were in the same position, uh, if they were burgled and they'd got a tool in their hand. But just as interest in the case began to disappear, a familiar figure reappeared. The man who had led the burglary on the night of the fatal shooting decided to sue. Brendan Fearon uh, issued a claim against um, Tony Martin for damages for assault. It had ruined his life, it had ruined his sex life, he couldn't um, get around, he couldn't go to the gym. And there was the possibility at one time that he could lose the farm in order to pay the compensation. And people who are just uh, normal citizens who haven't had any trouble with the law don't know how to manipulate the law to help them to the best of their ability. It is a, a worrying thought that um, someone uh, who's brought it all on themselves, like Fearon, get one day on no one forced him to burgle Tony Martin's um, house, uh, that there was a claim uh, which could have succeeded um, otherwise um, for money. To the popular press, Martin was, once again, the real victim, and they were eager to help. I thought, God, we got another hurdle to cross, haven't we? I wasn't very happy about that. 
and that cost a lot of money, that case did. And I can thank the Sun newspapers for that. The readers in there raised enough money to cover that. These shaky pictures taken by an undercover cameraman show a man out walking his dog with no apparent injury. But the Sun newspaper went even further to help. After catching Fearon on camera, riding his bike and seemingly fit and well, his demand for compensation was quietly dropped. In the years since his release, Tony Martin has continued to farm the land surrounding Bleak House. The house is boarded up with um, steel window shutters and nature has taken over its extraordinarily bizarre place with trees and branches growing through the roof. I mean, it looks like something out of a, of a horror movie, a Walt Disney horror movie. You couldn't actually, couldn't get in even if you wanted to now. But the land is something that he really cares about. It's quite interesting because he's no longer a poor man. He owns about 200 acres of land in about six different locations, I believe. And land in Norfolk is quite valuable. But the debate over what constitutes a legitimate response in the protection of your home rages on. It doesn't need alteration of the law. Anyone who knows all the particulars about the case immediately says, well, if we can't really found a new system of law on these facts, you're rather exceptional. But it seems to me that self-defence works in a very reasonable way, and, and the average jury understands it. I think it should be, the balance of probability should be towards the homeowner. Um, but everyone should, every case should be judged individually. You can't have people going round um, uh, killing people just because they're uh, on your property. Although I did discover in the course of um, this case that um, if you shoot a burglar dead in Texas, they give you 5,000 US dollars uh, as a present uh, for having done so. But um, I personally don't support that. Finally, in the 2008 Criminal Justice Act, the government redefined the laws on self-defence to give greater legal protection to those protecting their own property. Many question whether Tony Martin would be prosecuted were the same to happen today. I think they look more carefully now. Tony Martin was that rare creature, a popular defendant. And generally, the public do not want householders prosecuted if they can imagine that they would have acted in precisely the same way themselves. In the same circumstances, I think it's in, I think it's in its all. You are going to do something, you're either going to pick up a hammer, um, I don't know, a knife, or whatever. You're going to do something. Sixteen-year-old Fred Barris tragically lost his life as a result of the burglary at Bleak House. Brendan Fearon spent 18 months in prison for his crime. He was approached to take part in this programme, but demanded a fee. We declined. But it is the name of farmer Tony Martin that remains etched on the national consciousness. I'd rather be better known for something else. I'd like, you know, like to be um, Robin Hood in Sherwood Forest, or um, in Scaramouche, or some of those lovely old movies, something like that. To some, he will always be a folk hero. To others, a criminal. In his own eyes, he's returned to being a simple farmer. <sighs> Voila. It is beautiful. It is pure beautiful. <laughs>